Okay, okay so we'll start recording. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hi! Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Beards and Beers. I'm here with G. My name's Todd, and today we are going to talk about some fun recent news from Oracle here. But before we get into that, uh, since this is Beards and Beers, uh, we do have to kind of give a uh, little plug for our new sponsor, and that is the Beards and Beers Chocolate Milk Stout. Uh, that's what we've got going on today, and I will pour a nice one of those. I wish I could have sent some across the pond to you over there in Madrid, G, but unfortunately, uh, was not able to get you some. No worries, I've got my beer ready. However, if there is any beer company that wants to sponsor this show, just let us know. But anyways, uh, there's some, some big kind of news going on, uh, a lot of news going on this week. Well... We recently announced our new cloud observability and management platform. And you may wonder, what the heck is that? So the long story short, we've been working on a set of cloud services that enables visibility and insights across not only cloud services, but also traditional technology. No matter if you are running your stuff in the cloud on-prem or in a multi-cloud environment, we aim well, we aim to provide an easy way for companies to understand and manage their services. It's an end-to-end -end solution. So, so let's talk about observability. Let's talk about monitoring these kind of topics, right? Um, I, from the developer side, myself, and you're you're more from the infrastructure side, but with, of course, a, a great uh, amount of developer knowledge. So, from the developer side of things. In the old days, at least uh, as far as my memory is concerned, when you had these monolithic type applications, right, um, logging, observability, as far as the application logs go, it wasn't as difficult as it is today where we're in this kind of microservice world. You've got hundreds, sometimes thousands of distributed services and you have requests that, you know, that hop through and go, you know, possibly interact and touch dozens of services per yeah. HTTP request, right? So it makes life a lot more difficult when it comes to the developer trying to figure out what's going on in their application. Now, throw on top of that load balancers and clusters and Kubernetes and Docker containers and infrastructure logs and database logs, and you've got this gigantic unmanageable mess. So what is Oracle doing to make this mess easier to deal with for developers and for infrastructure people, for DevOps, for everybody? Before we get there, I think we need to define what is classic monitoring and what is observability. Long time ago, when the world was full of monolith application, there was a time where those apps were running in a device we could collect data from. So we knew what to look for and what to expect. A server fails, a network link flaps. Basically, you were running props and getting a set of metrics and logs about the system. We could track performance, we could identify problems, and we could even find the root cause of our issues. But now, with this new era of microservices, where you have all these applications that are composed of very small independent services that are communicated over well-defined APIs, that makes apps easier to scale. But it also makes it a challenge to understand what happens when things are not working as we expect. So what do you look for? You need to be prepared for unexpected behaviors. And here's where observability comes into the game. It helps to get an overall view across systems and how those systems interact and work between each other. So for this to happen, what do you need? First of all, logs. You need to collect all that info in a central place. Pulling together all that, all that data and that information will simplify the even correlation and parsers. We use FluentD, which is an open source data collector. You can easily ingest logs from custom sources. And here is where the fun comes. Customers can create their rules to automatically act on logs. You can trigger a function, send a notification using PagerDuty or Slack, or send logs to a Kafka compatible streaming service. So 
Having a centralized login service is nice, but what happens when you have terabytes of information? Here's where analytics appears. How do you make it easy to analyze and understand what is happening? You need built-in machine learning that is able to provide instant insights. Right. And I think the really important thing about these new offerings from Oracle and these new services is the fact that we're we're painting that complete picture and because we realize that you know cloud applications are one thing infrastructure is another thing database is another thing um network is another thing right and we have all these things in the oracle cloud but it's not just the oracle cloud that many of our clients are dealing with right there's these hybrid architectures where you may have on-prem, you may have other cloud vendors, and we're, we're painting that picture for the entire, uh, yes. we're not just limiting it to the Oracle Cloud. You have something on-prem, great, no problem. It's all part of this overall view. And we're giving them logging analytics with some really detailed machine learning driven uh, aggregations and queries and the ability to take a, go from this 10,000 foot view to drill into down to the very specific request level uh, of, you know, different events and figure out what's going on. Yeah. You navigate over the full stack. Now that's the difference. I really understand the whole, all the layers that are building all my services. But uh, the cool thing is you mentioned you have on-prem, we have other clouds. You can aggregate all that into a single place. You, you can have like a single pane of glass when you can really trace what is going on in your cloud. I think it's a, we are breaking the silos. So now you're bringing everything together and that's the only way to get the full picture of what's going on in your service. And not only is it breaking the silo, but you know, by using these tools like Fluent D and these open source CNCF type projects, we're showing a real commitment to to what's going on in the community, what developers are using, the tools that they're using today, what you know, what DevOps people are using. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We're not locking anybody in with a very proprietary type solution. We're saying, hey, we get it. This is what people are using. We're going to build a little bit on top of it, enhance it, and give it to you, you know, and give you a tool that really solves your problems. And I think that's really one of the coolest things about this. I'm really tired of seeing other companies come in and say, hey, now this new tool. Okay, now I have to put a new tool and I have like a bunch, dozens of things that I need to monitor and track. We need to really integrate and simplify things. We shouldn't have like 10 different platforms to monitor your whole infrastructure. Maybe a couple of them can work, but if someone comes like Oracle and brings you a single platform that you can manage on-prem, hybrid, other clouds, man, I think that's really, really cool. Now, the next thing is, let's look at that machine learning and artificial intelligence, because that needs to evolve. We're just launching <laughs> this platform that does very cool things. You can filter, you can search, you can trace what's happening. But there's some point that this turns into patterns. What's the behavior right. of my microservices? I need to right. trace that. And I, I'm, at some point, we should be able to say, hey, something has happened. I can compare that, let's see, with my bug database. So it's not only the logs, it's what if I integrate now the knowledge that we have out there? And we say, this is failing, and this is the kind of error, and we see that error 80% of the times is because of this issue. If I bring that to customers, they will say, oh my gosh, you just sold me <laughs> like one hour of troubleshooting. You're just linking up that. And I think that's the next step we should be approaching. Hey, uh, G, I know you could probably talk about this for another hour, but unfortunately we are running a little short on time here. But uh, to everyone out there, if you have any questions, definitely give us some feedback. Let us know if you're interested in learning more about any of these products or services. Just shoot us a line and we'll be glad to help you out. And that'll just about do it for this week's episode. So thanks for, uh, thanks for the chat, G. Always great to... Welcome share a virtual beer with you and we'll see everybody next time.